Okay, so this is a, uh, a short video lesson on um, The Colonial Drummer by John Beck. Um, it's a New York State uh, level four snare drum solo. So I'm going to go through the various sections and play parts of it and uh, talk about a few things that should be done. Um, the tempo is marked at quarter note equals 108, which is right here. Um, it's, uh, it feels a little fast at that speed for, especially for maybe a middle school student, for a high school student, that shouldn't be any problem. Um, I'll probably do parts of it at more like 104, but that's well within the range. So, um, I'm going by, there's no rehearsal numbers or letters anywhere, so I'm just going, or, uh, measure numbers. So I'm going by lines. So if you have your music in front of you, the first page, uh, there are nine lines of music. And on the second page, there are nine lines of music. Um, so we'll start from the beginning. So whenever these seven stroke rolls come up, they're going to be uh, played over 16th note triplets. Uh, otherwise the sticking doesn't work. So in other words, if you were to do a left hand, uh, seven stroke roll, you'd end up on the right. Okay. So, and in order to get that into an eighth note, not a dotted eighth note, you'd have to do it as a triplet or so the, the, the underlying rhythm in the first measure without the row would be this. Now on those triplets, I'm going to, I'm going to do an open seven stroke roll. So that should happen every time that that comes up, uh, once or twice here. Um, a few other things that happen, try to figure out what rudiments that you're playing. So it's pretty obvious. First line, second measure, that's a flamicue. Uh, then two in a row, uh, next line, same deal. Uh, third line down, um, uh, those are sevens again, no problem. Watch the dynamics. One or two things happen a little strange on the third and fourth line. Uh, the ninth stroke rolls normally rolls uh, all of the rudimental rolls uh, on the PAS rudiments or the NISMA rudiments all end with an accent. For instance, like or whatever it happens to be. Um, this ninth stroke roll, the first of all, the one at the end of the second line is a crescendo roll, but it doesn't end with an accent, so it, it, it may be slightly accented anyway. But the but the part that's a little more unusual is that the nine stroke roll, the, and the first measure of the third line does start with an accent and end with an accent, so which is a, it feels a little bit unusual. Uh, so you have to work that into the playing also. On uh, the fourth line, the last measure, that's a thirteen stroke roll starting on the end of one. So, is how that's played. That's pretty straightforward. Although coming from the measure before that, you have um, those two rights in a row to get to that roll. So right hand on the eighth note, and then a right hand on the thirteenth stroke roll. <clears throat> Fifth line um, has a mistake in it, in my opinion. Um, I've always played it. Um, as if it were a mistake, and so I made the correction. That is the second measure on the fifth line. That should be the same as the first measure, just two paradiddles in a row. Um, if you look at the sticking there, it says right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Um, so that would be like... Uh, that's one possibility. You know, I don't know that that's what uh, Mr. Beck intended, though. So... Um, I think it may have been a misprint. Um, if I'm wrong about that, I apologize to everyone, but uh, I think it's going to work much more smoothly if you play this line as such. So, and There's another nine stroke row of the accent on the, on the downbeat in the last measure of the fifth line. So uh, what you have on, on this line are, are two measures of single paradiddles and then uh, two double paradiddles uh, with an extra accent on those. Uh, next line, very similar. From there, we go into the oh, the one part that is a bit tricky here. So going in onto the seventh line on the first page, we have this crescendo up to double forte, fortissimo, and then immediately the next measure is piano. That's difficult to achieve, especially on a live drum. Right now I'm playing this on a drum pad, so we got... So you have to practice that... That's, that's how I would practice that to make that a little bit better. Going on to the next section, which starts in the middle part of the eighth line. This is another rudiment here. We have a lesson 25. First played forte, then 
That's a forte, then some triplets, forte piano, nothing big there. On to the next page. Um, the, and the last measure of the first line of page two. Those are going to be just, uh, so we have, we have uh, a, a single stroke, a flam, and then two drags. Starting on the second line of the uh, second page, those are uh, triple ratum cues. Single ratum cues here. And then, not really a rudiment, just a combination of things. And you repeat that. And then we're back to this, which we had on the first page. Um, starting in the middle of the fourth line, this is where it changes slightly. So we have some flam taps coming up at a fairly fast tempo. So first we have. So that's going to take some practice and then we do the same figure quietly. And, and then what we have on the sixth line first measure, those are two flam paradiddles played uh, at the piano level, so that's going to be kind of tricky too. So I shouldn't say it's kind of tricky. With a little bit of practice, it's not hard at all. So uh, again, the first measure of the sixth line, second page is. The last set segment here has a repeat, very simple to play, just uh, mostly rhythms without any paradiddle figures. So we have, this is the middle of the sixth line, second page. And that's repeated at the same volume level. Then the last segment, which is the middle of uh, the second measure of the eighth line all the way to the end, we have uh, paradiddles and uh, accented rhythms. And then the last two measures, we have a triple forte. So be careful on that. So we've got, uh, here's the second measure of the eighth line, second page. So that'll be a nice strong ending. So I'm going to start from the beginning and uh, play some of this, maybe all of it. We'll see. <laughs> um, so here's here's the beginning, Colonial Drummer, um, somewhere around tempo 104 to 108 for the quarter note. So. Sorry, I'm supposed to go back and repeat, <laughs> um, and I didn't. Actually, that doesn't repeat, my, my bad. So I'm just going to go on to the next section, starting at the next repeat sign. So here's the 17-stroke roll uh, on the eighth line going into the next repeat section. So here it is. That's the end. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to play just a little portion of this um, on the live snare drum so to give you some idea um, of the amount of volume uh, that this produces. We have to be a little bit careful um, when you're playing a live drum, especially for an audition or for a solo festival or whatever. Uh, it gets quite loud. Uh, I don't know if this is going to distort in the video. It might. But... Uh, just keep in mind, uh, if possible, don't sit up too close to where the judge adjudicator is sitting so that you have a little bit better range of dynamics. And be careful to judge what your loudest and your softest is before you start. You know, so get used to playing it on, on the live drum. I'll just play little parts of it so you get some idea of the sound. So here's the beginning. So that's just some idea of uh, how that's going to sound on a live drum. Um, and I think this solo sounds very nice with, with open rolls like that. As opposed to, you know, it doesn't say, but it's rudimental in nature. So if you were to play closed rolls, for instance, at the end of the first line and into the second line, it would sound like this. It's feasible to do that, but I think it's going to sound a lot nicer if we go. So you can hear all those notes in between. Okay, so I hope that helped. That's The Colonial Drummer by John Beck. And uh, it's a very nice level four solo with, uh, with a lot of fun uh, elements in it. So good luck to anybody that's going to be playing this solo.